Hello guys, hope I'm audible and visible. I'm waiting for the ad to get over. Can you guys hear me? See me? If so, say me a hi, hello. I'm good Priya, hope you're doing good. Hope everyone is here is good. Just give me a second. I hope Let us get something is. straight. Weight loss is not just... Hi Sunita, I'm good. Okay, great. So welcome back once again. How was your first day of this week? I hope it went, uh, started well. Uh, good evening, Lion. Good evening, Adhyant. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so we are going to continue the same thing. If you remember yesterday's class, we start with light bird and cholesterol accumulation, right? So I want to complete the intercellular accumulation, at least one part of the first chapter. So like the, similarly, we'll do a little bit of every chapter so that it gives you a confidence to learn Robin's pathology. That's the ultimate motive. And like I said, the trend has to change from your batch onwards. Every junior is going to read standard textbook all the subjects and become amazing doctors. And when I become old, take care of me, fine? So let's uh, start here. So we're going to go with protein and your glycogen accumulation. If you look at Robbins, I'll just skim through Robbins quickly. You will see one more heading called as an hyaline change. I didn't mean or write anything about hyaline change because hyaline is a microscopic terminology. It's interchangeably used. And we'll definitely see what hyaline change means. And we'll definitely learn about hyaline change also. We're going to cover three headings, subheadings in Robbins today. One is about the protein, one is about the hyaline a little bit, and also about glycogen. I am Somna, this is not the first session, this is the lecture number three. I think the other two ones are available in the YouTube, just skim through it. This is lecture number four, fine? Okay, so today we're going to see about the intracellular accumulation, the protein as well as glycogen. Just to make sure you guys are with me and you, you're reading properly, I'm going to ask you some question. I want you guys to answer. What is the color of light bit in a microscopy? or fat, or cholesterol, triglycerides, whatever it is. What is the color? It is clear, right? Great. It's clear. Fine. Amazing. So what do you think will be the stain which can pick up lipid on a microscopy? Colorless, clear, white, everything the same. Yes, Somna, they'll be available there. The stains are Sudan black and oil red dough, right? Amazing. Fine. So good. You're following, you're reading and let's definitely read the same thing throughout the year. If second year is taken care of, your clinical subjects will definitely be there. Fine. Uh, Nakul, I'll try the maximum. Whenever my time is available, I'll definitely do that. Fine. Osmic acid is a good stain, Praveen. Uh, I'm just going to stick with whatever is there in the lab. Most of the labs don't have osmic acid. That's why I kind of remove them. Fine. Okay. So we're going to go with intercellular protein accumulation. Right? It usually appears, the definition of Robbins, rounded eosinophilic droplets. It's not always a droplet, but yes, predominant of the time, it will be droplets. Let's take, I'm having a, pro a cell here. The protein might be tiny, tiny, tiny droplets like this. If I'm having a good amount of protein accumulation, it can form a bigger blob. Right? This Both of them are possible. Tiny droplets, vacuoles, or it can cause aggregates in the cytoplasm. Protein is going to be pink in color. Right? We did read about a little bit about the microscopic appearance in our live classes in the uh, essentials batch. Can anyone tell me which part of the cell is, will be blue in appearance in a microscope? Whatever comes to your mind. Which part will be blue in microscope? It will be the nucleic acid or the nucleus, right? Protein is going to be pink. Cytoplasma is going to be pink. Nucleus is the only one which will be blue in color. Amazing. Great. Fine. Now, Let's see the different places where I can see a protein accumulation. I'll go with some normal physiology. With your help, we can easily understand pathology. What do you think is the reason or what do you think is the function of proximal convoluted tubule of kidney? I'm sure it's a very common question and I'm 100% sure everyone here will know the answer. The function is reabsorption, right? Good evening, medicos. It's reabsorption, fine. So normally, my protein will be filtered by the glomerulus. The proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs the protein, right? So I'm just going to ask you a question. If there is a disease which will cause excess secretion of protein from the glomerulus, is there a possibility the protein can get accumulated in the proximal convoluted tubule? Is there a possibility? Definitely, right? So when I have a disease where I'm gonna, going to have a lo lots of loss of protein in the urine, the PCT reabsorbs everything and stores it, right? right? That's the first thing. I'll have reabsorption droplets of proteins in the proximal convoluted tubule. Like normally, PCT will have reabsorption, but it's not good enough for accumulation. It just stays there. 
but we have a disease that disease we will read them when we come to your uh, renal pathology we have a disease called as a nephrotic syndrome so in patients with nephrotic syndrome see this is how we are going to understand the first chapter and we will be linking it with systemic pathology or diseases in patients with nephrotic syndrome i am going to have a condition named as proteinuria most of the things will be self explanatory right protein is going to be lost in the urine so when you have proteinuria automatically the excess protein will be deposited in the proximal convoluted tubule i'll go to the robins image i'm not use the image here we have the book here right we can easily see the images here so if you look at this part of the image can you see them can you see that there are tiny 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 granular is it uniformly pink or granular pink uniform or granular they are kind of droplets like granular i'll zoom this even more bit further can you see them they are kind tiny 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 drops it's not a uniform pink color cytoplasm i'm having globules or droplets of protein absorption right over the period of time if it's too much everything will coalesce together and form a single big molecule of protein right that's what uh, will have look like a protein reabsorption droplets in your proximal convoluted tubule especially in a case with a nephrotic syndrome fine great next uh i want to ask you a question again what do you think is the function of plasma cells the function of plasma cells just a normal thing i'm sure everyone knows the answer here plasma cell is an inflammatory cell which produces antibodies right they produce antibody can i say antibody is also a protein is that statement right antibody is also a protein it is immunoglobulin right so i'm having a disease when i'm having excess amount of plasma cells is there a possibility the plasma cell will produce more and more and more and more antibody and that can retain back in the cell yes can anyone tell i think we have discussed this previously sometime can anyone tell what is the neoplasm or cancer from plasma cell we did discuss them when we were discussing stem cells if i am right there also we do stem cell transplantation what is the disease does it ring a bell myeloma i have a neoplasm or cancer of plasma cell called as an myeloma or an multiple myeloma leukemia is for uh, a neutrophil let's assume myeloma is a term for plasma cell right so multiple myeloma or a myeloma in multiple myeloma you're going to have excess amount of plasma cells right there are lots and lots of plasma cells and these plasma cells if they are in very much excess they are going to produce more and more and more and more antibody that excess antibody stores in an endoplasmic reticulum though it is not required for me that details of endoplasmic reticulum but that is seen in microscopy as russell's body i'll show you a russell body in a plasma cell from a leukemia this is from my case look at this a beautiful accumulation of protein inside right all these are protein i am not seeing the cell at all everything is like a protein resorption droplets right these are case of russell body right amazing image intracytoplasmic accumulation of protein antibody in a plasma cell is called as a russell body again look at the color it's pink in color because this color is very important for me because that's how it's going to help me in diagnosis fine next okay let's say if it's a normal protein produced in my body how do you think proteins will be removed from the body do you know any mechanism have you heard about something called as ubiquitin or a chapiron the normal protein will be attached with a product called as ubiquitin and that will be destroyed by pro process called as proteasome pathway that's how normal protein will be removed right as i'm having a normal protein here i'll have a ubiquitin tag here and the proteasome will come and cut so if i'm having an abnormal protein right hello twinkle if i am having an abnormal protein or a defective protein or a misfolded protein my pathway cannot digest it my body knows this is a normal protein it can cut them fine you can cut them into multiple pieces but if this pencil is completely twisted my body will not understand it's a protein it cannot cut it that's what happens here whenever i'm having an abnormal protein synthesis there are two places in robins where they talk about abnormal proteins in the same page i'll talk about both of them here fine so i have a disease called as an alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency okay we will read them again when we come to lung chapter this in detail so what happens in alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency is the pro produced alpha 1 antitrypsin itself is abnormal it is misfolded so any misfolded protein cannot be digested and it accumulates inside the cell you can see them clearly in a liver biopsy okay in a liver biopsy i can see an abnormal misfolded alpha 1 antitrypsin i'm just going to ask you one more leading question good evening techno helper and medico arya if the 
ab- alpha 1 antitrypsin is abnormally folded do you think it will be functional good evening bukrazi world nice name do you think it will be functional it won't be functional right it won't be functional at all so this alpha 1 antitrypsin is not going to be functional so which means one more organ also will be affected lungs if you look at robins it will be written lung will have a disease called as an emphysema very early for you to learn about the disease wait for just six more eight more months we'll learn every every disease which is known for us fine so the alpha 1 antitrypsin is abnormally folded so it's not going to be destroyed it accumulates in the liver and there's no functional alpha 1 antitrypsin right that's one part next we'll go to cytoskeleton you must have heard about cytoskeleton in your uh, i think in your physiology have you heard about actin microtubules intermediate filaments there are three groups of cytoskeleton for me actin tiny ones intermediate filaments and microtubules the bigger ones right these are the cytoskeletal proteins what do you mean by cytoskeleton is i'm having a cell here does cell have a shape or not do they have a shape they do have a shape the shape of a cell is given by the cytoskeletal proteins so the proteins in the cytoplasm are called a cytoskeleton my body cytoskeleton like that i have cell cytoskeleton amazing great so in the intermediate filament part i have multiple subtypes so i have intermediate filaments i'm going to name a few thing some of them you might have heard before some of them might be new for you um have you heard about something called as an epi- epidermis or an epithelium yes you must have read about a mesenchymal tissue right you must have read about multiple different types of tissue i have something called as a glial tissue right glial is where the cells in the brain are right thank you aditya a uh, medico sarthi the most likely answer for me is an um, retain placenta but i would want more information to comment on that fine okay so an epithelial tissue will have a very specific cytoskeletal protein called as cytokeratin i'll tell you the importance of learning this a mesenchymal tissue will have a important cytoskeletal protein called as an vimentin these are all intermediate fragments but they are unique for one lineage glial tissue has a very unique protein called as gfap glial fibrillary acid protein someone talked about myosin muscle parenchyma will have myosin right muscle parenchyma will have myosin so i have different different groups of cells having unique protein now i'm going to ask you one thing listen carefully and answer if i have a cancer coming from a mesenchymal tissue what protein will they be positive for what protein will they be positive for medico sathi like i said it it superficially looks like an hypovolemic shock due to retained placenta or something of that sort vimentin perfect that's how i'm going to use it for diagnosis these are markers if i have a squamous cell carcinoma carcinoma is something comes from epithelium cytokeratin will be positive right so this how you use marker profile like i said if you know normal abnormality is a piece of cake that's all right now let's come to the abnormal cytoskeleton accumulation right let's take hepatocyte hepatocyte is an epithelial tissue or a mesenchymal tissue or an endodermal tissue this i want you to answer hepatocyte epithelium mesenchyme or endoderm you need not completely type type e or m that's enough it's an epithelial tissue right am i right in saying that alcohol will damage hepatocyte possible it can so a person consumes lots and lots of alcohol right uh, dhruva markers means when i'm having a cancer part right when i'm having a cancer part i'll be able to understand okay this most likely is this type of cancer fine the alcohol will damage hepatocytes when i say damage hepatocytes they don't damage the entire cell sometimes they damage only the cytoskeletal proteins so in microscopy what i see is damaged cytoskeletal proteins fine a damaged cytoskeletal protein now i want an answer from you a damaged protein will be light pink or dark pink medico sathi i won't look at amniotic fluid embolism initially because this bleeding per vaginum which is an unlikely finding or maybe a dic amniotic fluid resulting in dic it will be much more darker right perfect so it accumulates keeps on accumulating and looks darker in microscopy what i'll see is an a cell with a dark inclusion this is also a protein inclusion we call this an alcoholic hyaline right if you look at this carefully i use the term hyaline here also we use the same term hyaline when we read about the protein droplets in the proximal convoluted tubule right 
in the protein droplets and proximal conduit tubule. I'll tell you why the highlight is important very soon, fine? Last but not the least, any mutated protein, Robbins has one more heading, it can have intracellular accumulation like prions disease or an, in Alzheimer's I have some protein accumulation, lots of them. Also, if it's extracellular accumulation, I have something called an amyloid. So these are the places where proteins can accumulate, fine? Great. Now, I'm not going to write anything. There is a heading called as hyaline accumulation in Robbins. We'll go to that. We'll go to that and we'll see about it. Right? If you look at hyaline, why I'm not writing is and why I want you to know is, if you look at hyaline, it's classically mentioned. I have highlighted that part also. If you have Robbins with you, please highlight that part. It's a descriptive histological term. It's not accumulation of protein or carbohydrate or glycogen or nothing. It's a descriptive histological term. Whatever causes a homogeneous glassy pink appearance in microscopy, I call it hyaline. Kamran has said about Mallory dunk bodies. The older term for Mallory dunk body is Mallory hyaline body because it was pink in color. So anything pink in color in microscopy, I can call it hyaline. So can I say, if a question for you comes in exam of hyaline change, can you write Russell body? Can you write them? Can you write protein reabsorption top plus in proximal conductive tubule? Yes. Yes. Can you write your amyloid? I'll definitely do Harry Styles. Yes. You can write anything which is pink in color. Doesn't matter if it's protein, right? So that's when if you read a little bit below, it will be classically written. Intracellular accumulation of protein resorption droplets, hyaline, alcoholic hyaline, Russell body. Everything here is nothing but hyaline only. So it's hyaline is a descriptive term. So if you ask a question of hyaline change or a protein accumulation, both answer is more or less same. But just write a top one line. Hyaline is a glassy eosinophilic appearance in microscopy. Hyaline is a descriptive histological term, does not relate to what is getting accumulated, right? Collagen is pink in color. Hyaline. You must have seen uh, skin biopsies, right? Dermis is completely made of collagen, pink in color. Amyloid, extracellular, pink in color. Anything pink in color in microscopy, I call the term hyaline. Please do remember this. These are terms. These are very, very useful for me to apply and identify systemic pathology findings, right? Hyaline means something pink in color, that's all, right? Okay. That's the second part of the today's discussion. We'll go to the glycogen accumulation. So glycogen has two different colors, okay? Has two different colors. Glycogen initially will be having a pale pink appearance. This will not be there in Robbins. I'll tell you why it is important, right? Just remember that. I'll tell you why it is important. In Robbins, it will be clearly written that glycogen will be dissolved in an aqueous solution. Glycogen gives clear appearance. I'm not saying it's wrong. It is completely right. This is important for me because a practical problem I'll face, which we'll see soon. Definitely glycogen accumulation will be seen in glycogen storage disorders. Can anyone tell me at least one example? Definitely Akshay. That's for diagnostic dilemma. I'll come soon. Anyone glycogen storage disorder? Good evening, Sai. One Gierks disease, amazing, right? You had a huge list of table, right? One Gierks disease, fine, okay? Diabetes, also I can have glycogen deposition because in diabetes, you're gonna have a sugar absorption. Can I say storage component of sugar is glycogen? It is, right? So in PCT, in diabetes, I'll have glycosuria, everything will get absorbed and will store, right? So there are two examples which is given in Robbins for glycogen accumulation. One is diabetes in the proximal conductive tubule, and other is glycogen storage disorder, wherever it is, fine? I'll tell you how to use the terms very soon and how to diagnose a clinical scenario, fine? Now, glycogen is also pale pink. Protein is also pink. I'll show you one image, okay? It's a liver image of glycogen storage disorder. The reason why I said, please do remember, glycogen is also pale pink. You need not write that in the exam. Please just remember them. What is the color here of these tiny, tiny rounded structures? What do you think is the color? Is it clear predominantly or pinkish in color? It's pinkish in color, right? Should be in FBMC. Let's learn Priya. It's pinkish in color. So here I have a confusion whether it's glycogen or a protein. Yes, this part, again I'll show you. Look at this. This part, this is a proximal colored tubule. The lower half, clear or pink in color? It is clear right so sometimes in microscopy for me glycogen can have a pinkish appearance and also a clear appearance 
and it's a little bit of concern for me. If it's clear, I don't have a problem. But if it's pink, can a pathologist, without the help of a special stain, can I tell with confidence is protein deposit or a glycogen deposit? Yes, no. Can I tell that or not? I cannot, right? Ak Akshay Jain asked a question. PAS. That's where it's useful. The simplest rule of using a special stain, be it a Sudan black or a PAS, is if I cannot identify, if you cannot identify or differentiate something on a light microscopy, I need a special stain. Just remember that. Don't memorize in the form of a table. I don't want a table. If I can't differentiate, I have a problem. Again, here, it's clear. Can you differentiate this from a lipid? You can't. In light microscopy, I can't. So obviously, I need a special stain. The utility of special stain is simple. If I can't differentiate something on a light microscopy, I use a special stain, right? So now, that's where my diagnostic dilemma comes, right? Both PAS will be positive for both the places. Let's take, it's a liver biopsy. We read that in case of an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, what gets accumulated? Protein or glycogen? In alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, what gets accumulated in the liver? Protein, right? In case of an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, we'll have a protein accumulation, right? In case of a von Georg's disease or a glycogen storage disorder, we'll have this appearance, right? You'll have a glycogen accumulation, right? Very good evening, Rahul. Perfect. So I know the difference here. Now you are the pathologist sitting with a slide and you're seeing pink color deposit. You cannot identify one Georg's or a protein or a glycogen. You can't identify. So what you do is, you do a special stain. So when I can't identify or differentiate protein or glycogen, I do a special stain, which is PAS. PAS stands for periodic acid, acid shift. It's not periodic. It's a chemical term, periodic, fine? When I use a periodic acid shift, unfortunately, protein is also positive. Glycogen is also positive. Now, can I differentiate or I'm coming in the same problem? Initially, both was pink in color. Hello only for you. Good evening. We did a PAS. Again, both are positive. Can I differentiate or not? I can't differentiate. So I have a modification, right? So I have a modification. The modification is also there in the Robins. The modification is I have an enzyme called as diastase. Okay. I have an enzyme called as diastase, right? Let's see where it's Robins. If you look at Robins, it will be there and some part in your glycogen. In glycogen, it will be written the staining with ignore the best carmine, PAS, and the diastase digestion. This is important. This is going to help me to identify its glycogen or not, right? Now, diastase is an enzyme. It's a saccharidase, fine? It will cause glycogen hydrolysis. I'll go back to this, uh, our notes. Let's look a second. I'm adding diastase to a slide. Which of these two do you think it will destroy? It destroys sugar. It will destroy glycogen or it will destroy protein. Which you think will destroy? Diastase is a saccharidase. So diastase will digest glycogen right am i right in saying that it will digest glycogen amazing so now i'm going to repeat pas after adding diastase when i repeat pas tell me which will still be positive i'll come to dakshay tell me which will still be positive i added diastase i digested glycogen i'm repeating pas which will still be positive perfect protein will still be positive it, this will become negative. The reason why it's becoming negative in glycogen is because the diastase is digested glycogen. So I use the term PAS positive and it is diastase resistant. This means I am dealing with something which is not glycogen. In this condition, I am dealing with a protein. If it's PAS positive and I use the term diastase sensitive. Okay which means it is sensitive to diastase digestion and we call it glycogen. Okay, we call it glycogen, fine. That's a difference here, fine. I hope you guys understood. If you don't understand, let me know. Akshay, carmine is a good stain. See, I'm telling you, I will definitely for sure ignore few points which is there in Robbins because it's not practically applicable. PA is the most widely acceptable stain. Diastase is easily available because diastase is there in the saliva. Carmen is a very difficult stain to do. We don't use it in real life. That's why theoretical thing, I'm ignoring voluntarily so that I don't want you to remember also. Even if it comes in an exam, don't worry. Because long term, our only goal is patience, management, diagnosis, treatment. 
distinction harness is not a long term goal right but carmine is also a stain which can stain glycogen theoretically speaking right okay a carmine will not stain protein obviously fine so i know there's a difference here now how an mcq will be framed i'm going to give you a random question tell me the answer comment whatever comes to your mind a 3 year old kid came to the opd with congestive cardiac failure we couldn't save the baby baby died post mortem heart biopsy was taken microscopy showed pink globules which is pas positive diastase sensitive what is your diagnosis what's your diagnosis pompase pompase so can i say in the biochemistry table of glycogen storage disorder i can create one one unique mcq because von gears predominantly has hepatosplenomegaly i think mccardell is muscle phosphorylase right skeletal muscle pompase is cardiac involvement so for every glycogen storage disorder i have a unique symptom what is done in next pg exam or neat exam or inacd exam is these are facts i connected to the patient when i connected the patient the application is what i'm going to test you i don't care if you know 100 facts i only care about if you are able to link it in a real time and give an answer clinical questions are very easy the only thing is to correlate and how do you become an expert of correlation is do it multiple times doctor becomes better with experience we are like red wine more experience you are more knowledgeable you are right so just practice clinical mcqs initially if you make a mistake completely fine right so that's about today's discussion the protein accumulation and the glycogen, glycogen accumulation right any doubts do let me know if not we'll call it a day no doubts in the next class i'll be going with pigments rahul uh, ping me your thing i am not exactly sure i'll let you know soon it's i think it'll be definitely validity most likely okay bye bye all the very best see you in the next class till then read well take notes if you take notes ping me on instagram tag me i'll tag to the entire world and make sure everyone in india at least will read robins so that selfish our doctors will become the best fine bye bye